Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table, we're going to be playing Street Masters, but this time we're doing a digital. We're playing the game on Android today, but it is available for, I believe, Android and iOS. I believe. I think I have it here. Yes, Android and iOS, right here. You can get on Google Play or the App Store. Uh, it's not available on Steam yet, or I'm not sure if it ever will be. I don't know, but uh, yeah, we played Street Masters, uh, the physical board game, on Friday's stream. We're gonna be playing more of that tomorrow, but today we're trying the digital version. Uh, we're gonna try this thing out. I have played it a bit uh, on a couple of my other devices. Uh, and one negative, it doesn't, um, it only saves achievements and stuff and progress locally to the device you're playing on. So it doesn't, uh, like cross sync it or anything like anything fancy, like most of the games nowadays do. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't save your progress. Like here, your achievements, if you beat a stage with a certain character, it will record that for you and let you know when you're selecting your characters, which ones you've beaten certain things with. Um, but it saves it per device, so you might log into a device and, and it has a whole bunch of different records and achievements. Uh, so just letting you know that's how that works. Or does not work. Alright. Okay. Hello everybody joining live. Okay, let's see here. Hey Matt, Dragon Paul is here, Scott's here. Brospite. I haven't played the physical version of this, but was having trouble. Rocking the digital rules. Hopefully this will help. Yeah, I understand the rules like of the base game. I just have not. I read through the story mode rules like one time a while back, but I haven't played story mode at all in the physical or digital game. So I'm not a pro with how that works. I just kind of remember there's like it throws in there's like a whole rival mechanic and an ally mechanic that I haven't dabbled with either. That can be played in story mode or arcade mode, but I think in story mode you're kind of forced to deal with allies and rivals. There's also specific story decks. You can also earn perks and penalties and upgraded cards for your hero and stuff. Um, playing through story deck and there's a little story, obviously, in story mode that you can follow along. <laughs> Sakava's here. Rob's on. That's mean it's time for a sandwich, aka lunchtime. Uh, hello, Sir Han. We're getting in the way. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, real life. Ugh, rough sometimes. Mel's here. Elko, how's it going? Tim's here. All right, so we're going to be checking out this uh, app. You can see it on the right here. Uh, or no, yeah, your right. Yes, I think on your right. Um, and you can see uh, there is story mode, arcade mode. Arcade mode is what we were playing in the stream on Friday with the physical game, where you just basically... Choose some heroes, choose an enemy deck, choose a stage deck, and go. And you play that as like a one session, one and done kind of thing. Uh, in this app, it will record which things you beat with which characters. So it is kind of like unlocking achievements, I think. Like kind of recording what you've done. If you're trying to be a completionist and do everything in the app, it will record that even if you do the one and dones. Uh, there's also a quick start, which I'm not sure. I don't know if I've ever used that. Uh, the store. Talks about expansions, wants you to rate the app, uh, links you to purchasing the physical board game. And at some point, I guess they'll have a store where you can get expansions for the Street Masters board game and similar titles. But that's not available, but there's nothing in the store to buy for the digital game. But I assume if this game sells well enough and people play it, I'm assuming they'll add more expansion content. But from my understanding, it's basically just the base game content in this app for those who are curious. Uh, for me, that's fine. I only own the base game of Street Masters. I, I'm not missing anything here. I'm probably you can even have extra stuff in this app, I think. Uh, but yeah, let's go to arcade mode here. Uh, no, we're not going to continue. We'll abandon. So it does save your progress if you're in the middle of a game and you have to minimize it or anything like that. Uh, it does continue where you were left off. Uh, I have had that happen. Uh, it's great for being like a portable version of Street Masters. You can take on the go on your, you know, your phone or your tablet or whatever. Uh, that's how I was first played Street Masters actually is on the app uh, in this digital version to kind of learn the game. There is a, there's a rules thing. Oh, up here, up here. Sorry, let's look through the menu. Uh, there is a tutorial, which that's what I walk through to learn the game. It even gives you tips and stuff that aren't in the physical game rulebook. 
that kind of gives you like, maybe you should try this because of this reason. Here's why you wouldn't use this defend token because you're saving it for this. Like it does little things like that. It's kind of neat little tutorial walks you through the game. Uh, so I highly recommend doing that. It, it will prompt you when you first launch the game if you haven't done it yet. Uh, it will bug you about it, but if you've skipped it or you don't care about it, it, it won't bother you after that. Um, maybe we can even... And I also turn down the music. Normally there's some rock music playing right now. I think I can probably... <laughs> nice, uh, you know, 80s, 80s rock music player in there in the background for that. Uh... I'll see if I want to change anything. Oh, here you go, quick start. You can select quick start rules. So if you want to have a quick start ready, you always like playing with two fighters, and you want allies involved, and you want rivals involved, for example, uh, it will do that for you. There you go, that answers that. I was wondering like, how does it determine like a quick start? Is it fully random? But you can do random setups in this, which is interesting. Uh, there was something else. There it is, achievements. So on, on the installation I have on this device, I've only, it seems, one with Megan by herself against Dimitri. But for example, my other, on my phone, for example, I have it like Natalia, Megan, and Kyoryu, however you say that. Uh, all have beaten Dimitri because I was like goofing around trying to learn the game, doing that. Um, and oh, it shows you the stage here. So I did on Gone Ballistic, but you, you, you know, you can try to complete every combination you want in the game, which is neat. And then, oh, it has a story stuff too. I have not never scrolled down this far. Uh, and there's some kind of special victories. Order. <laughs> Victory with six loot cards in your loot area. Oh, really? <laughs> Victory with at least 10 power. Defeat a boss that has at least one of each defense. So you gotta like hit him with direct damage, I guess. And victory with one health and zero defense remaining. Oh, wow. Survive with one health left. That's an achievement. And you got to try to do that with each hero. Each hero wants to get all those. Uh, but that's cool. That's cool. Then you go to bosses, I guess, and see which bosses were defeated by which characters. So you can sort it by bosses or fighters. That's neat. Oh, look at some other stuff here. Uh, on key. Oh, yeah. Uh, so sometimes you'll see, uh, it'll, s you can simplify the rules text. So if you play the game a lot and you don't need to read the cards or read the abilities, uh, you can have it so it'll just show you these symbols on the cards. And it automatically does this when the cards are like small pictures on the app. So, you, you know, you obviously, obviously wouldn't be able to read the text. Um, but with this, it, it'll show you a symbol. So you can kind of like, if you know the symbols, uh, you know exactly if it's like, you know, move so many spaces, then, you know roll an attack die or whatever it's it has all that on the, on the card and you'll see some of that as we play but if you really want to learn them all and then turn off the text it would just show you symbols even when you're like blowing the card up full screen uh which is neat and no i, I like i said i've been playing i've played this way more on my phone and on um another laptop actually uh using like an android emulator so this is a different i, I have I've only played on this laptop one time and just to test it out and goof around getting ready for the stream. So that's why you see the Megan uh, win in there and nothing else done. Uh, so that, that's why I was complaining about that at the start of the stream. It's kind of an annoyance that it doesn't, like a lot of games I play on, on Android or even on Steam or whatnot, they'll save your progress. Like even like Lord of the Rings, Dreams of Middle Earth or Mansion of Madness apps for those board games. Uh, if you play it on Steam, I'll, I'll, I'll boot that up on a laptop and then another computer and then the desktop. And they all will remember the pro, uh, like the settings and and all that stuff across those devices. I think it saves it through Steam or something. But also on Android, I've noticed that usually you can log into the apps. Uh, so if I log into like Raiders of the North Sea or Root and that kind of stuff, uh, Direwolf Digital has like a backend and they sync stuff across the apps. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're the ones that do that too. But there's a lot of Android apps that do that uh, that I know of. Uh, but this one doesn't. It's it's everything's contained in the device, which also a negative. Uh, now I can't get these out of the way. Also a negative, if you noticed here, with a lot of games today, like in the last like three years or so, a lot of board game apps that I've played will have some kind of multiplayer component, whether it's local 
or online. This has none of that. This doesn't have a pass and play mode, although you could just play the mode where you're sitting beside each other and sharing the device, passing it over when it's the other player's turn and that kind of thing. So I guess there technically is pass and play, but it's not like listed as such. Like most board game apps will have a pass and play where it lets you know, okay, it's the other player's turn and, and you know, pass them the device now and then pass it back or make decisions. And it has no online play or anything like that, which hopefully they'll add. I, I thought that kind of sucked that there was no Street Masters online play. I can't just like, you know, start a game with a friend and we play back and forth, whether it's, you know, delayed or real time or whatever. Uh, none of that. And hello, Adam. Hey, Spencer. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Frostbite. Uh, try yeah, arcade mode is where you should start for sure. Arcade mode is where you should start. Uh, so that's what we'll do. Uh, is there a specific character you guys want me to goof around with here? As I, I've only played uh, Ryu here and Megan and Natalia. Those are the only ones I've ever played, period. I've never messed with Gabriel, I've never messed with Brandon, and I never messed with Ying Hua, if I'm saying that right. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. What do you guys want me to play? And, and I think she's more of a support character, this last one here. But supposedly they all can be played solo. Um, I'm just not a pro with this game. FYI, you know, disclaimer, I'm not a pro with this game. I'm still pretty new to Street Masters. So if we get wrecked, it's all good. I didn't spend any time setting up the game today, so I wouldn't be that frustrated. <laughs> we can just restart it and try again. <laughs> the 8 dice roll. Well, man, come on, man. There's a random button right here. I'll just do that. Oh, I see. Oh, I didn't realize. I just noticed this scroll bar. So I guess somehow you can play with the redemption pack so you can use the bosses as characters, which I guess is an expansion for the physical game. Uh, and it looks like you have to... This is okay. So, so you have to get defeat Dimitri with six different fighters. So you got to do those achievements to unlock more content. I just learned out about this right now. I had no idea. I just noticed this scroll bar here. <laughs> Oh, this is awesome. And I want to get rid of this box. There we go. Voting for Natalia. All right. Albion Games voted for Natalia. We'll just go with Natalia. I've only played with her, I think, once, maybe twice. So let's, let's go at this new. We'll try to explain everything here. So we're selecting our fighter. And what's cool in this, it gives you a little write up here. So before you even select, you can go, okay, I'm thinking about Megan here. Let's, let's read about Megan. And Megan's a mobile fighter. Her true power is unleashed when she has all of her tactic cards in play. Each of her tactics has the chi trait and the channeled keyword. These channeled effects provide Megan with various tricks to, compl uh, to complement her attacks and abilities. And her complexity rating is 1. So it's cool it shows you. So if you're like, trying the game out, which I was when I first learned Street Masters was on the app, uh, I was like, okay, I, I don't know who to pick, what they do. And then I clicked one and I'm like, ah, here we go, okay. This guy's right up here in the top left. He's a recommended starting guy, or Megan, I guess, because they're both complexity one. And we'll try multiple fighters too uh, after. I just I'll just do like a solo game here, just to just to compare to like last stream, just to show you. Um, so Natalia. Then if you want, you can select rivals and allies. They're normally in the board game, at least the one that I have. They're just little tokens. Um, they're like little NPCs, non-playable characters that have like low health. Uh, they kind of have a little AI controlled uh, ability on their text box. It just like moves them so many spaces and attacks, or you can exhaust them and do abilities or those kind of things. Uh, and that's what these guys do. So you can add rivals, which will start beside the boss, and they'll come and try to fight you, I think. And then you could have allies, which go uh, start near you and help uh, attack the boss or, or the enemies or whatever, the minions. Uh, but I've never played with, uh, so we'll just leave that out. I, haven't even, I don't even think I read all the rules for allies and rivals uh, yet. Uh, so we'll pick Natalia. And we'll continue. So here's the four uh, enemy decks that come in the base game. The Brotherhood, the Cartel. We've seen the Brotherhood. We did that on last stream. Uh, and then the Golden Dragons and the Kingdom. So, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, like, there's difficulties to these guys. Oh yeah, sorry. We forgot to read about Natalia. So Natalia's covert ops military background gives her access to subtly deadly cards, making her more effective the more she sneaks behind enemy lines. She also has access to crippling direct damage, 
that can make short work of both minions and bosses. I like it. She has some of the best damage output of any of the fighters. Her complexity rating is 2, though. Not sure if we're ready for this. We're doubling our complexity level. It's going to get nuts. <laughs> just kidding. And then you can click View Deck. This is awesome. So right from here, you just click View Deck. Boom. All the cards are in front of you. You want to read about a card. Boom. You're on it. Uh, and then I think this is how you switch in the bottom left here. I'm clicking on... Uh, let's actually... Sorry. Full screen here. Full screen. My bad. My bad. Thank you. Oh, I forgot I wasn't on that view. <laughs> So uh, from here, uh, we can click on a card, and in the bottom left there, which you can kind of see by my head's a little book, and that'll switch it to that that uh, the action text. If you just wanna, if you're if you've read all the cards, you don't need to read them, and you you're, or you just want to memorize symbols and stuff, uh, they totally have that as an option here. So you can do that, and that's what'll show up on the card when it's smaller on the screen. Is just that text. So you can switch. Uh, so crippling strike. She starts with eight. Or sorry, Crippling Strike is her ability. Natalia, 18 health. Six power she needs to flip to her other side. There's her other side. So on the main side, Crippling Strike is an action attack. Two dice you roll. This attack deals general damage. Then exhaust a minion targeted by this attack and draw one card. Card draw, nice. On her charge side, she has an ongoing ability, Incursion here. You may move up to two additional spaces during your move step. So she can move up five spaces. And your attacks deal plus one direct damage. That's huge. So you might want to keep her on this side. Because she doesn't flip until you do her action. So if you do her action, you'll do three dice. This attack deals direct damage. Then you flip the card. And her next card here is an ability. She has three copies of that. It's Rush B. You may move up to four spaces. Each time you enter a space during this movement, you may attack with one die. Dealing direct damage. Direct damage is the damage that ignores all those defense tokens. General damage is the damage that you have to take away defense tokens, and if there are none, then you'll actually hit the character. Uh, until then, it just ab gets absorbed in defense tokens. Uh, each of these attacks deals plus one direct damage if you have not attacked the target yet this turn. So she's just like running around, like punching enemies, uh, which is cool. Hey, Jordan. Uh, so she's got three of those. Then she's got ability Razor's Edge, three of these. If you're unengaged, that means you have no enemy adjacent to you. Like no boss, no minion, no rival adjacent to you. You are unengaged. So if you're unengaged, you get to attack with two dice. This attack may target an enemy within five spaces of you. So it's a ranged attack, obviously. Dealing a single type of damage of your choice. Very flexible. You can deal kick damage, punch damage, or grapple damage. Uh, which is cool. Very cool. I like that. Uh, then we have a uh, disarm attack. So if you guys remember last stream, Dimitri, for those of you who were there, uh, had this whole gear system where he was grabbing gear, putting it in his little enemy row, and then he was wearing like a Kevlar vest to get defense. He was firing around an RPG rocket and throwing a knife at us constantly. This can actually knock those cards out. So you get to attack with two dice. After resolving the attack, you may discard one card controlled by the target. It was a perfect way we could have been popping away the gear. Um, although he would have drawn it back if he ever did his equip uh, ability, but uh, and if not, we can draw a card. Then we have Sonic Blade here, which is an attack. Uh, two dice. Before this attack, you may discard up to three cards from your hand or your fighter play area to add plus one dice to the attack for each card discarded. That's like a good finisher kind of thing. You could really power that up. Sorry, throat tickle. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, snap kick. Attack with one die. After this attack, you may discard one card with the two attack with the die, adding plus one die to the attack for each stealth card in your discard pile. So this attack you see has like a sub uh, trait here called stealth. So that will that will matter. So we kind of want stealth cards in our discard pile, I guess. And then she has commando tactic, which is stealth. Your attacks gain plus one die. I love stuff like this with just a passive ability. You put it in play and you just get to get that extra die every attack. Uh, the action, each fighter gains two defense tokens of their choice. So she's got a good support effect here. 
Then each fighter with at least one of each type of defense token heals two damage. So if we have one punch, one kick, one grapple defense token on us, we get to heal two damage. And if you're playing with multiple fighters, those fighters would also. So this kind of ability works with itself. It's kind of neat. Then for a feint ability, this means discard this card from play, uh, move three spaces and play one attack card from your discard pile. So she has like a... Yeah. <laughs> that's no snap kick. That's a knee strike. Yeah, yeah. That's a... <laughs> That's a knee to the face for sure. <laughs> uh, all right, so then we're gonna go uh, recon is her other tactic. Stealth, three copies of this, obviously. Uh, when an enemy would attack a fighter before dice are rolled, you may discard this card to cancel the attack. Interesting. Uh, you can exhaust this, so that doesn't count as your action for the turn. Uh, so you can exhaust this to so shuffle one stealth card from your discard pile back into your deck. To reveal the top card of any deck, then if no stealth card uh, remain, no stealth cards remain in your discard pile, discard this card. So you want to kind of keep stealth cards flowing in your discard pile. So I guess you wouldn't want to remove this, remove the final stealth card. But and here's another tactic: stealth, infiltrate, exhaust. If unengaged, return one stealth card from your discard pile to your hand. And then we have an action: reveal the top card of any fighter deck. Then either put that card into play or discard it. Then you may discard this card to attack two dice, dealing direct damage. That's that. Those are her cards right there. So you can do that with any fighter, which I think is super cool. So let's go to continue. Uh, and hey, Kanji. Uh, let's see here. Golden dragons. Dragon wants the golden dragons. Uh, sure. So the Golden Dragons, they are a complexity rating of 2. That's complexity rating. I don't know if that's difficulty rating. I don't know if this is the same thing or not. But it's they're more complex a little bit. Uh, the Golden Dragons. A Long, A Long, uh, has a wide variety of moves represented by his heavenly dragon cards. His mastery of his techniques comes with uh, restraint and discipline. So even if fighters are able to avoid these devastating attacks, they give him valuable moments of mercy that allows him to prepare for the next strike. Fighters need to adapt to his shifting style and engage slash disengage as required. Huh. Oh. Let's view the deck. Yeah, exhaust. Yes, exhaust is like rotating the card or tap, I think, from magic. Uh, but it's exhaust, like every other board game that, you know, you rotate a card 90 degrees, it's usually exhaust. Or, what's the other word? Uh, I forget. There's like three terms that are very common in board games. Like exhaust, something else, and then ready to like ready it up usually. Um, but yeah. We have... A long or a long, probably a long. Uh, activate a long attacks dealing plus one direct damage. Ooh, each fighter that was not attacked this way activates the mercy effect on each card in their threat area. What's a threat card? A mercy card. Sorry, mercy card. Oh, I see. So we have black typhoon kick, and we've got a mercy effect here. Each fighter discards one defense token. Ah, uh, okay, a couple of these. So activate, if Along is within two spaces of you, he deals you three kick damage. Otherwise, he gains one kick defense token. This is nuts. This is nuts. This one here, activate, if Along is within two spaces of you, this is the fa phasing hook punch. Uh, if he's within two spaces of you, he deals you three punch damage. Otherwise, he's, he gains one punch defense token. And then the mercy effect is he heals one. What the heck? We got merciless clutch. Each time a long attacks, he deals plus one grapple damage. Two being weird. I'm getting like. 
YouTube messages over here out of nowhere. What that was all about. Anyways, um, so Along attacks each fighter within three spaces of him. And, or sorry, Along. Along uh, gains one grapple defense token from each fighter that was not attacked this way. You guys stealing my tokens? What the heck? An invincible armor. Along can block damage using defense tokens from this card. Activate. For each defense token on this card, Along discards it and deals each fighter one damage of the matching type. Then place three random defense tokens on this card. Man, this guy is nuts. This card cannot leave play, so he's got a tactic card. Along gains plus five health. Per player, each time Along suffers five or more damage from a single attack, discard one Heavenly Dragon card. Activate Along. Along gains defense tokens until he has at least two of each type. Wow. I don't know. I, I don't know the strategy of this guy, but it just seems like he's going to have 100 defense tokens on him every turn. And yeah, he'll be able to hit me from multiple spaces away, assuming he has these cards in play. Now, getting rid of a Heavenly Dragon card. What does that even mean? Guard one Heavenly Dragon card. Missing something here? I don't see more cards. I don't know. I'm not sure. None of these. I don't see any cards. Do I see any cards named Heavenly Dragon? I don't know. Is that a typo? Or am I missing something? Oh. Um, but, sorry, I forgot to look at the characters, or the minions. So we have Jin. Who comes in with five health, four attack, two punch defense tokens. Uh, he has an activate ability. Each fighter engaged with this enemy, or attack each fighter engaged with this enemy. Then, if unengaged, gain one random defense token, advance three spaces towards the nearest fighter, and deal one fighter engaged with this enemy three general damage. Okay. Uh, Dao. Uh, activate. Uh, so he's got six health, sorry. Three at attack. Comes with a kick and a grapple, defense tokens. Activate, advance four spaces towards the nearest fighter and attack. Then retreat two spaces and gain one random defense token for each space retreated into. Okay. Got Juan Bo. Who, seven health, five attack. Doesn't start with any defense tokens. Interesting. Activate, advance one space towards the nearest fighter and attack. Then if unengaged... This enemy deals two general damage to each fighter within two spaces. If this enemy dealt no damage during his activation, it gains one random defense token. Okay, so he's running around the board hitting people pretty hard, it looks like. Wow. Oh, yeah, he's, there's three of those guys in there. I don't know. All right, let's, let's try these guys. Now, stage. Here's the problem. I have only played on a couple stages. Uh, I've played on Gone Ballistic a bunch of times, obviously, like on stream and stuff. Um, I tried Right to Remain Silent. I don't know how to play that one correctly. I've tried Cashed Out because it looked interesting. Uh, I'm not sure if I've ever won on that one yet. And I've tried... I try... But they all have their own, like, gimmick. And sometimes it takes me, like, a couple plays to understand, like, what the heck you should be prioritizing. <laughs> Uh, but we can try to figure it out here. Uh, let's do a random, I guess. Let's do a random. Oh, it's not even going to let us... not going to pick it yet? Alright, whatever. We'll figure it out, I guess. Fight! Alright. So, stage rules. I don't like the way it's not showing us the other side of the card here. Uh, so stage rules. Each objective token enters play active. 
Each time an objective would suffer any amount of damage. So I don't know what stage this is. Oh, sudden death. Right down there in the right. It's like very small. Sudden death. Okay, we're playing on sudden death. <laughs> Each time an objective would suffer any amount of damage, the corresponding token becomes inactive instead. Each time an objective is exhausted, its token is placed on this card, and its card is removed from the game. If there are three objective tokens on this card, the fighters lose. Okay. Okay, and then we can do an interact if we want. If adjacent to an inactive objective, so they enter play active, but if they're ever inactive and I'm adjacent to one, I can flip it, place three random defense tokens on its card, or if engaged with the boss, move up to three of your defense tokens to an objective carried by the boss. Boss drops that objective, active side up. Okay. Huh. We're putting defense tokens. See, like, when you get the stage rules, it doesn't, like, doesn't come together because there's so many other cards involved. So it's, like, you have to piece everything kind of together. That's the only thing with this game. Or at least playing in the app. You, it's, like, hard to spread out all the cards in front of you, right? I should have looked at the deck for this one. Or, but I, we picked random, so I couldn't. <laughs> uh, so select an objective to put into play. So hold on. We can pause this, which is kind of cool. If you want to pause it in the middle of it prompting you for something, you just hit the pause button. Then you can kind of look at everything that's been set up so far. Uh, so it looks like it's something about executed challengers. And then see the way it kind of like puts the text into symbols there. I don't know what those mean, but uh, so it's keeping track of executed challengers because if we reach three, we lose. All the week. This is a stage condition. Activate. The boss moves three spaces towards the nearest inactive objective. Then if engaged with that objective, the boss picks it up. The boss can only carry one objective at a time. Sure. So the boss starts down here in the bottom right. We start up here in the top left. So based on that, I probably want to put an objective token not near the boss as best I can. But I also want to kind of work my way to it so I can put defense tokens on it, I guess. If it becomes inactive. Oh. But all, all the crates are down here in the bottom right too, except for this one up here. And you can hit the little down arrow here and kind of move it out of the way if that box is in your way there. Uh, so we could, could just head over to the right here. I don't know. I'm not sure. We'll throw it here. So here's our boss man along. We read four attack. So plus one direct damage. Eric, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to Rob's Gaming Table. All right, uh, so this is the boss man. Here's our uh, fighter. We get to select a starting position. We can pick any one of these four positions in the top left. Awesome little joysticks on them. Uh, I don't know, sure, right here. All right, here's our mulligan. So we drew into two Rush Bs, a Commando and a Sonic Blade. Uh, I like to get a whole bunch of tactics out ASAP. But this, this Rush B we could play to help us move, but we'll just see what we draw into. Okay. Okay. So let's look at our hand now. So we got Commando. I want to get that into play so our attacks get an extra die, right? We got a double of it, of course, of course. So, but we could feint, uh, throw it away to move three spaces, play one attack card from your discard pile. Problem that sucks. You discard this, but then you, I don't think you get the plus one from commando because you would have already tossed the card before you're playing the attack. 
Okay. So let's start our turn. You just click the start button here on the bottom. And we start our threat phase, right? Uh, I think you can see here. Yeah, right here. So if you hit the menu in the top right, you can see the, the steps of a round, like your little uh, reference card in the physical game. So you know we're in the threat phase right here. We draw a card off of the enemy deck. And we got Deo. Okay, he's going to try to move four spaces towards me and attack. And we can select a spot to enter since these both are equal distance between uh, or next to me here. Uh, we can choose where the enemy goes in. Just, I don't know, let's try to try to fight, I guess. Go up this way, I don't know. Actually, should have put them. So the cool part is you can undo your last move in this game. Uh, so we can start our turn again. <laughs> And we can then put them down here, maybe? I don't know. I don't know what we're trying to do here. I don't know this stage. I don't think I've ever played on it. But we'll, we'll try to figure it out here. Uh, Velko is asking, is there any digital game that is maybe better than its physical counterpart? Um, personally, I would kind of always prefer the physical game. Like, it's it's those are apples and oranges, right? But... You have to judge it based on your personal preference. Like sometimes, and what I know from talking to some of you guys is uh, sometimes you just will play a digital version more because you can get it done quicker. It's set up in like seconds. It's cleaned up in seconds. It handles some of the rules for you. It reminds you of stuff. Uh, so you don't have to memorize all the rules. So even if it's a more complex game, you can jump right into it. Games that I think are so far that I've played that like I probably would gravitate to playing the digital game more would be like Through the Ages, for example. Just because it's like takes like 40 minutes to put a cube on every single spot a cube needs to be on to get your board set up. I'm just kidding, it doesn't take 40 minutes, but but you could just literally boot up through the ages and rip through a game of that super quick. But for me to set up a game of that, play it from the physical game, and refresh myself on some of the rules too. Uh, it would take quite a bit of time plus cleanup, so it's up to you. I don't know, but this game you can play quick too. Same idea, but this game sets up pretty quick. Um, yeah, I just like having the physical stuff all spread out because sometimes trying to jam everything on a UI makes the game a little like fiddly and trying to figure out where things are and you can't see all the cards at the same time and stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know an answer to that. I can't think of. Uh, Dragon says those that are fiddly for the size, I tend, I tend towards the digital, such as one deck dungeon. I can see that. I can totally see that. You're not playing with all those like little dice trying to like put everything everywhere. Like one deck dungeon, you just boot it up and and you just click through it, right? Also, games with like lots of shuffling, like the digital app, sometimes is fun. But I don't know. If you're playing solo, yeah, like, like sometimes the digital version is better too. That's neat. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure. Anyone have an answer for Velko in the chat who plays more digital board games? I'm not I'm not really huge into the digital board games. Uh, but yeah, if anyone has an answer for his question in there in the chat, drop him drop him an answer. George, you watch us picking random stuff here. Uh we're just we're just goofing around with the app. I'm no pro with Natalia. We picked a random stage for fun I've never played on before. And we're playing against the Golden Dragons, which seems like we're gonna lose pretty hard because I don't I don't know how we're gonna beat Along. But uh, we're just goofing around. So, Sakaba says, Tapestry expansion arrived today, still waiting on Pendulum, even though it was a month before. Thanks to Panda not sending the shipment to Canada. Yep. Canada Kickstarter or Canada anything in the board game industry problems. We, we, get, we get shafted here in Canada for sure. It happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's continue on here uh i don't remember what we're doing okay we're on our turn um so i don't know what to do to start here these things oh here we go i was trying to figure out how what the rules are with the objective you click on the objective in this one so this one a new challenger so it seems like we're in some kind of fighting pit here and the boss is trying to like execute fighters we have these guys 
While active on the map, this objective is treated as a fighter. There you go. There you go. So we have activate stage play area. So if this objective is in the stage play area, which they are when they start, I think. It advances three spaces towards the nearest enemy and attacks. Otherwise, it gains one random defense token. If it's active in the enemy play area, so that's if the boss picks it up, I guess. Roll two enemy dice. If both results match, this objective is executed. Oh, wow. Like he breaks his back. Okay, okay. Hmm. All right, we just fight this guy. What does my, my, my ability do? It's two dice, but I can get plus one. Oh, okay, okay, let's do this, let's do this. Uh, let's throw Commando into play. Okay, what's the exhaust? There's no exhaust? Okay, no, it's an action or a feint. Okay, then let's move. Let's just move here. Okay. Then let's just do this fight action. And we got to draw a card. So we got Sonic Blade. Sonic Boom. All right. Uh, attack with two dice. For this attack, you may discard up to three cards from your hand or your fighter play area. You add plus one die to this attack for each card discarded. Hmm. Interesting. I guess if you get a card draw engine going, that's pretty powerful. Pretty powerful. Okay. Uh, and that's it. Otherwise, I could do faint effects, which don't count as an action, but I think we're going to just go. So you could click activate all, and it will just go through each step to get you back to your turn. Like, it will just activate all the cards so you don't miss any. But it, it highlights here with this glowing glowing aura around the cards let you know what could still be activated so we're just going to move on with the enemy's turn so we're going to activate them and what did he just do the cool part is it's got a log too if you're curious you can go to the log and it'll tell you what has happened okay so starting draw phase along oh along got a kick defense the act, okay, so I think it goes from, okay, so we did, yeah, it goes from bottom to top. The most recent is at the top. So Crippling Strike, we rolled three red dice, got three hits. Then the Dao lost a kick defense, a grapple defense, took a wound, and became exhausted. Then we revealed Sonic Blade, we drew that card. Then we started the react phase where he did his Black Typhoon activate. He got a kick defense out of that. And then we are now in the draw phase. So if you're ever like, what just happened? Which in this app, like things just fly sometimes. Uh, it, that's how you can kind of check, which I like. So he didn't move. And you can also use these little arrows up here to flip between the areas. So we can see the enemy row here and the, and the uh, stage row here. So we can check out. He activated. So he attacks, dealing plus one direct damage. But nobody's a, a, engaged with them. So each fighter that was attacked this way gets that mercy effect thing. I don't have any mercy cards in front of me yet, I don't think. I'm pretty sure. No, I just have an enemy with me. Oh, no, I have Black Typhoon Kick here. Ah, I do have a mercy. Each fighter discards a defense token. But I didn't have any, right? So that just passed that. Then, try to understand here. This is a thing. In a physical game, I just grab the cards. I'd know what they were because like I could see them all in front of me. But in the app, I gotta like click around trying to figure out like what what happened in what order. But again, I'm a Street Masters noob, so this obviously will be easier as as you play more. Uh, and then we activated this. He moved three spaces towards the nearest objective. So this hasn't happened yet. This hasn't happened yet. I don't know why though. Oh, it's not inactive. This this objective is still active. 
So he doesn't move yet. Okay. Sure. Oh yeah, that was just the react phase. You're right. That was just the react phase. That that's why that makes sense. That's why none of that's happened. I got it. I got it now. Just react phase, which I should know better. Which is just before I draw cards. Then we go to enemy turn. Duh. That's why I'm trying to figure out, like what is going on here. Try to make sure I wasn't doing it wrong. Okay, so we'll draw a card. Recon. When an enemy would attack a fighter before dice are rolled, you may discard this card to cancel the attack. Okay. All right, so now it's the enemy turn. So again, you can activate all, or we'll just go card by card here. Now he's gonna, we're gonna activate this card. So he's gonna move towards nothing. Then he gains plus five health, but he hasn't lost any. Now he's gonna gain defense tokens till he has two of each type. So dumb. Now the challenger can advance three spaces towards the nearest enemy. Oh, okay. And now we're gonna draw a stage card. Overconfident. The active objective token on the map nearest the boss advances four spaces towards the boss. It just like ran away from the boss. If there are no active objective tokens on the map, put the inactive objective token nearest to the boss to its active side. Well, that's, uh, yeah, <laughs> it just moves almost back to where it started. Uh, all right, so let's start our turn. Invincible Armor. A long can block damage using defense tokens from this card. And that's that whole one, it like activates, discards it and deals each fighter one damage of the matching type for each token on it, then place three random defense tokens on the card. Yeah, that seems nuts. That seems nuts. I, I don't know. I don't know. That seems nuts. <sighs> okay. Fighter's turn. What the heck? Let's try to just beat this guy, I guess. This guy has no defense tokens on him. I think they would show right here. But he has five health left. You really want to disarm this tactic card. Yeah, that's the other thing. We could disarm if we have that kind of card, right? We have one that does that? I don't... I don't see... I don't think we have... Oh, we have this one, right? Nope. This is Exhaust Dominion. Yeah, we don't have that card. We did read it, George. We went through all of her cards before we picked her, just... Uh... Just to see what she kind of can do. But I do remember there was at least one card that she has a couple, uh, like three copies of. Yeah, I haven't even drawn it. Okay. Excellent. All right. <laughs> so yes, we want to disarm him, but we can't. So let's just draw more cards, I guess. So playing a card. I think I just fight this guy. Like, I don't have a tactic here I can play down that can buff me up at all before I fight him. So I'm just going to do this attack, I think. And then we'll get some cards, and then we'll see what happens. Disarm. Here we go. Here we go. We just drew it. Give the devil. All right, sweet. This guy has two health left. Oh, I think I forgot to do this last turn. Oh, man. Oh, no, not the faint. Oh, I see it's action. Yeah, because we went and fought this guy. That's right. I thought it was an exhaust. I don't know why I keep thinking that. All right. Uh, so, move, I guess. Or, 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 let's do a fight. Maybe we... Sonic Blade? Here we Sonic Blade. I don't know. Uh, le 
let's toss. I don't know. No, I already get extra dice, right? So let's just see what happens. Oh no, let's skip this part. Discard up to three cards from your play area. What? No, I don't want to discard this card. Get out of here. No! Boom! Got our ninja star. During your turn, you may discard this card to deal two damage to any figure. Move three. Go this way, I guess. We want to deal damage to this guy. I feel not. I feel like saving it for like when it's kind of needed. This guy just heals and stuff, right? Doesn't he heal? Or did I read something wrong there? Five? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Fighter turn. Let's just activate all. Which should now draw cards. That was React. Recon, when an enemy would attack. Yeah, we already have one of those in our hand, right? It's just gonna fly through. When you click like activate all, it's just like bang, bang, bang. There you go. Well, this guy's, this fighter's running towards the boss. That's not good. We wanna get there, right? Um, so draw a stage card. Personal Vendetta. Each active objective token on the map advances three spaces towards the nearest fighter and then attacks one fighter. Man, this, this stage is... I don't know what's going on. If there are no active objectives, each fighter flips. No, no, this guy's going to move back to me now, isn't he? Yep. Like, this token is just loves running and going back to its starting position over and over again. It's driving me nuts. But at least it's not... The boss isn't destroying it, right? Marvin, thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome to Rob's Gaming 2. Okay, so let's go with... Turn our turn. Okay, so we got Jin coming into play. He's gonna get random defense tokens if he's unengaged to attack. He's gotta be, he's gotta be engaged with you first to attack. Then he does some advancing. And then he deals direct damage. Moves pretty quick too. Okay, let's see what happens to this guy. Oh, he's right beside me already. I didn't realize there was an enemy spawn right in the middle there. I should have noticed that. That's interesting. He's got punch defense. What is my attack? What kind of attack is this? Oh, just general. She just does general. Ugh. So that I kind of have to do like seven to this guy because general damage has to, has to get through those uh, defense tokens first. Well, that kind of sucks. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to think. I probably should just attack this guy. But it's, it's like not going to do much to him. Let's see what's in our hand now. And I don't want to disarm on him. What's in our discard pile? Just this card? Mm hmm. Where was the one playing a card? Oh, that's Commando's Faint. Also, if we get some defense tokens, that'd be nice. Um, hmm. well, this, this objective should attack this guy at some point. So let's just fight this guy. Like, I don't know. I don't want to move and grab this first, but I don't know if that's smart. Yeah, let's just fight him, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. We got a snap kick. Attack. After this attack, you may discard one card to attack another with another die, adding plus one to the attack for each stealth card in your discard pile. 
we don't have any in our discard pile. Oh, Matthias' tip here, attack him to exhaust him. We just did that, perfect. Play Commando to protect the token. Protect the token. Oh, because he's a fighter. But the problem with Commando... If I play it from hand, it just goes into play and, and removes the previous commando. Like, play effects, like, that's not going to help us. I would have, instead of doing this action, because this is an action. Oh, not commando. The other tact. Oh, the other tactic in my hand. I get it, I get it. Uh, you're saying recon, right? Yeah, recon. So when an enemy would attack a fighter before all dice are rolled, you may discard this card to cancel the attack. Okay. Get it in play, get it loaded up. Uh, okay. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move like this. Yeah, I'm gonna move like this. I'm gonna grab that. Then I'm kind of like near him. He's he's not going to engage. Then if this fighter gets near me, maybe I can activate it. Put some defense tokens on it. So during your turn, you got some soda. Fresh soda. No, fresh. I don't know. That's a word. That's not a word I would put with soda, but sure. Uh, during your turn, you may either give this card uh, to a fighter adjacent to you or discard this card to draw a card. I feel like we need to draw cards right now, so I'll leave it. How much loot was the trophy? Having three loot at the end of the game? If we win with three or six loot, six six loot in our pile, we could get an achievement. <laughs> uh, okay. And this was just the feint. Yeah, recon would be it could be very helpful on the stage. You're you're correct, Matthias. I can see why because I I didn't put it together. I thought it was only to protect myself, but I keep forgetting these objectives on the stage are counted as fighters, so that would help in that case. I gotta remember that. It's, it's like tough getting used to this when I've played so much on like a couple other maps and it's like everything's like different. That's, that's part of the replayability of the game and I like that a lot. But I'm still a noob. So there's like so much to discover in this box. I love it. Anyways. Or in this case the app. But in the base box I mean. Alright. So. Uh... I think we're good. Let's react. What does that keep doing? He's within two, he's not within two spaces, so he doesn't do three. He just keeps gaining kick defense tokens. Oh my god, he's gonna have a ton. He's gonna have like a hundred. How many does he have already? Four. <laughs> this is gonna be silly. We're, we keep ignoring this guy and he's just getting beefier and beefier. <laughs> oh man. All right. Lockhart. Another snap kick. Okay, let's activate the boss. Oh. Uh-oh. He just made the fighter inactive. That was using this invincible armor. Probably should have ran at him to try to knock that away. That's okay. Mutual cause. Event. Each fighter may move up to three of their defense tokens to one or more objective cards. Distribute it however the fighter wishes. If an objective carried by the boss gains one per player defense tokens this way, the boss drops it. Active side up. Each fighter that did not lose defense tokens this way flips an active objective to its inactive side. I can't do anything with that. Like I'm getting these events that don't do anything. Like, okay. Start our turn. Another Dow here. I don't know, you can go up here. All right. So, what can we do with this? Nothing there. Something with the stage. Adjacent to an inactive objective, we can flip it and place three random defense tokens on this card.
Okay. Okay. Let's... I don't know, I kind of want to finish this jerk off. He's at four now. I don't know, I feel like I have all of her cards in my hand, though. Infiltrate! Oh, here we go, another tactic we don't have. Uh, if unengaged, return one stealth card from your discard pile to your hand. Action, reveal the top card of any fighter deck. I don't know. Let's just attack this guy. I want to interact with this token though. But I, also the boss will come up this way, right? That's part of the thing. If if the token's inactive, we can get the boss to move to us, right? Can you put full text when minimize George? I think I did that on my phone, but I d it didn't, uh, since it doesn't save it across. I like it that way too, actually. I, I don't like the symbols either. Uh, always on, yeah. I did that on my phone, actually. Or no, not, not that one, not that one. It's not always on. I need to turn it off, right? I did not read. I clicked too quick. Always off. There we go. Yes. Old school, like I want it like the board game. I don't, I don't need no fancy stuff added on. Okay, I didn't realize you could turn it completely off. I, I did it on my phone though, but I forgot. I knew you could turn it all on though. I remember that. I remember that. Thanks, George, for that. Yeah, I don't care for the symbols at all, but it's cool. Like you could, if you want to try to remember them, you could like, you know, take a screenshot of this, print it out, put it on another monitor, or whatever. Whatever you do, if you play it on a device. I don't know what you're going to do. you got to keep going to the menu. Okay. Uh, so. Now what? Is it better to try to take this guy out or activate this guy? I think we take this try to take this guy out, right? Or do we try to take him out with a card? Yeah, let's just do this. I don't know. Okay, we hit him for one. Discard a card from your hand for an additional attack. Uh Yeah, let's do this one. One away. At least we got some defense tokens. We should have played infiltrate. Yeah, we'll we'll get that going. Um I'm gonna do this. I know. There ah! we go. Two power, sure. And we're gonna move. Uh, let's move. There. Go interact. What is the interact on here again? 
Let's do this. Yeah, let's try this. I, I don't know. I don't know if this is right. I'm just going to try it. Let's give him some defense tokens. Let's beef up this fighter. Help him out. Got this, buddy. Back to back fighting. All right. Exhaust. Shuffle one stealth card from your discard pile back in your deck. Reveal the top card of any deck. How many stealth cards are in here? I got two. Let's 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 wait on that. Let's wait on that. Save the red shirt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I don't know. I don't know the stage. Like what to prioritize. Like you know, I'm just gonna goof around here in the middle. The boss is kind of like chilling over here, but I, I, he's just getting beefier on his defense. So we'll need to go down and, and deal with him. I think at some point, but we can still build ourselves up probably. Okay. Let's just activate all this stuff. Okay, lost the defense token. Uh, so I'm getting hit with invincible armor. What's happening here. Oh, okay, so I only have that much grapple. Okay, so sure, one kick, yeah, whatever. that thing not activate? Oh, it went inactive again. Really? I don't know. Blame. Sound advice. Event. Any fighter may discard two defense tokens to... Oh, of course. I just spent one like an idiot. Uh, may discard two defense tokens to put this card in their fighter play area. Otherwise, discard it. I could exhaust. Choose one effective token. Move it one space. Action, if there's an active objective within three spaces of you, each fighter may draw one card, gain three random defense. Okay. Yes. Priority, get to the boss and disarm him. So can I... Can't get close enough with just the default move. But I need, if I can activate her... More energy... Yeah, this guy needs to die though, right? I can, I can like bait the boss, right? If I go move, I'm gonna move here. A, B. And we're going to discard. And they have his three left. I mean, we'll just exhaust them, I guess. Should have did this first, though, but that's my bad. Who's uh, defense token to add? We'll add a punch. <laughs> Brass knuckles. Oh, see, I should have played this first. Or no, I just drew that. But let's see what we got for a card, I mean. Sonic Blade. Act 2. Before you attack, discard the 3. Oh, okay, that one. Got rid of that guy. Now the boss should... Select deck to reveal. Oh. One. So overconfidence coming as an event. So there is no active objective. So it will flip. It'll flip a token. So I don't need to worry about that, I guess. Not that I would anyway. I already did all my stuff. Start Natalia's recon from play to cancel the attack from Dow. No.
Power up, man. Ah, charged. All right, about time. So we get some extra movement. And my attack deals plus one direct damage. This is what I wanted. Took, for, took a while to get there, though. That's my own fault. Oh, there's that rush B. <laughs> we can move four spaces. Each time you enter a space during this movement, you may attack with one die, dealing direct damage. Each of these attacks deals plus one direct damage if you have not attacked the target yet this turn. Yeah, I definitely want to stay charged. That's what I did before this, Natalia. I stayed charged, like, almost the rest of the match. And just used it to, like, buff other attacks and stuff. And then, like, cycle back cards and do those multiple attacks or whatever. <laughs> Doc says, making me want to organize my Aftershock crate. Yeah, it's literally a crate. Uh, but it frustrates me so. I'm spoiled. <laughs> too many crates. Too many crates. Yeah, I do like the Rush B card a lot. I played a lot last time I goofed around with uh, Natalia. Okay, uh, so let's just activate the boss stuff. Enemies. There he goes. He's, he's come to me now. Sure. Boom, it's active. Okay, now we're going to hit the boss, right? That's the plan, knock a card away. That's why I, I want him to come to us. That's why I went within two spaces. Oh, another enemy spot right there. I didn't even notice that's where the other guy spawned. That's fine. That's fine. We're engaged. We're engaged, that's for sure. Okay, so... We want to play Disarm, right? But do we... Where is Disarm? Yeah, let's just play Disarm on the boss. Invincible Armor happens. Hold on, what does this do exactly? I need to know. Oh, I see. He's blocking defense from this card. That's, what's, that's what it's prompting us for. What oh, we just get rid of? Yes, please. See ya. That feels good. That feels good. All right. Now what? Whoops. Whoops. What did I just do? Oh, I hit clicked. Double click by accident. Let's go back. Oh, I accidentally clicked complete. Okay, so we're good. The undo for the win. Uh, all right. Mando's action. Each fighter gains two ults. This is for heals. And that will help. Does this guy ha has... Oh, we can give one type here and then this guy can heal, even though he doesn't have health, right? So, but for us... We wouldn't, we would get one of each and then we would get a heal. Yeah, that seems good. What we want to do? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like we don't want to do the action to flip, right? So we'll choose one of each type. So now we have Maul huh. and we heal one. This guy didn't gain any? What? Come on, what has happened there? Each fighter gains two defense tokens of their choice. Oh, but when they make a choice, the they, these guys don't get to do it. Yeah. Yeah, they don't get to do it. Whenever there's a choice, that was in the rules. Uh, okay. Move five, yeah. <laughs> hmm, should I go get a crate? I think so. More brass knuckles. Uh, this guy's advancing towards. Bring it. Yeah, why not?
now inactive. Probably should have. Probably should have made it defend. That's okay. George is suggesting next turn you go next to the boss, use the punch attack using both your brass knuckles. If you deal five damage, you get rid of a special mercy card. Is that Heavenly Dragon? We, uh, George, I, I should have asked you. We were trying. We were reading this earlier. I don't know what the heck a Heavenly Dragon card is. We looked through the whole deck. What does that mean? A anytime he suffers five or more damage from a single attack, discard one Heavenly Dragon card. I don't know what that is. Unless it's on cards I'm not noticing. That one card in your threat area. Let's check. This is a Heavenly Dragon card? How do you know that, though? <laughs> like, it's called Black Typhoon Kick. It's special. And I don't see Heavenly Dragon on this card anywhere. This, I don't know. Sure, okay, I'll believe you. I'll take your word for it. But I was confused. I should have grabbed the physical cards. Maybe they're on that. But that's okay. All right, good to know. I did not know what that did. I was just confused, so we just left it. But that's, uh, that's smart. We should deal with that. Okay. Could be in his setup instructions. Again, it did not show us that. Yeah, it just shows this. I don't know. Which are not in the app. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's weird. And we picked the random stage, so it didn't show us any of the stage setup. It just like got us right into it and was telling us to pick this, pick that. And I'm like, uh, a bit nice if it still prompted the front of the, the card instead of just the stage rules. But that's okay. That's okay. All right. So, uh, fighter turn. Card. Another snap kick, we got it back. All right, activate the boss man. Wait, my tokens. <gasps> oh, he captured an objective. Oh no. Going for the execution, he failed. Assistance required. Each fighter may discard one card from the play area. If less than one per player cards are discarded this way, this card deals the active objective nearest the enemy three general, general damage. Uh, I don't see any other object active objectives, so we're good. If no objectives are in play, search the stage deck for an objective card, put it into play if able. Are we okay with that? Do we want, yeah, we want them more to come into play. I don't care. Sure, I'll be the fighter. Yeah, I'm not discarding anything. We got the red objectives in play. Okay, great. Yeah, this is uh, this is not available on Steam. This game is on. We're playing today on Android, but it's available on iOS also. And I'm using a mouse, obviously, and not the touchscreen. <laughs> As I think you can see the mouse cursor, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Activate. This is Jin again. And enemies, enemies. Okay. But we want to go punch the boss, right? We move all the way to here. Oh, yes, we can. All right. I want to hit him twice. You do. What does he have on him? Click on him to see. He has two punch, seven kick, two grapple defense. Oh, man. Okay. So, general attack not doing that so let's see good oh we should have did a rush b that would have been funny you can maybe do that next so a sonic blade would be a punch yeah let's try that brass knuckles has to be the punch right so um sure Hmm. 
We're just discarding cards to get extra dice, I think it was. Right. Like the enemy to attack. Yeah, let's brass knuckles. Yeah, let's do it again. Look at all those dice. Yeah, we got an exploding one. Just one though. That's that kind of sucked. Okay, so we're selecting this card to this card. Yep, that works. Hello, Mark. Hello, Brian. Welcome, welcome. All right, action left. So he didn't drop this token. How does that happen? Oh, here. Do that. <laughs> I don't know. Make him drop the token. And these are just faint effects, right? Let's return this card to the deck. Let's look at the stage deck. So mutual cause is coming. Uh, each fighter may move up to three of their defense tokens. I don't have enough for this. Each fighter did not. Oh no, it's going to flip a, a thing to its inactive side. That sucks. Oh well. Nothing I can do about that. That's fine. Select the fighter to advance towards... Oh, I see. If I make them all inactive, though, I don't want to do that. I don't know. Sure. Oh, did he do punch, actually? Got another rush beat. Activate the boss. So... Hmm. Well, what is this recon doing for me, really? Oh, it's me getting cards back. I think we cancel. Sure. Oh, we got an objective. Trying to execute him. Yeah, I got the punch. Okay, I became inactive. That sucks. Start my turn. Another minion. So, what's the boss looking like? 11 health, tons of tokens. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's. How many stealth cards do we have in our discard pile? One, two, three. Yeah, that's nice. But it's all kick damage. So it's not going to do much to the boss other than get rid of defense tokens. But I mean... Not bad. Rush B? Yeah, should we do it? Move up to four spaces. Each time you enter a space during this movement, you attack. We get to roll two dice, right? And deal direct damage because we're charged, right? And then you deal direct damage with the dice. Each of these attacks deals one direct damage if you have not attacked the target this turn. Okay, let's do it. What's the best way to move? Like around this way, right? One, two, three, 
No, 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 no. Let's try that again. Oh, oh come on. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> Play a card. I want to do this. And that'll attack this guy. Then I want to do this, attack this guy. Then I want to do this, attack the boss. And then this, attack this guy, right? I feel like that's the way I want to roll. I don't know, sure. So this guy. You'd put it all on a long, okay. And you just like would lose out on the defense, uh, the extra direct damage though, right? I was trying to get like the most damage dealt out of it, but yeah. So it just would have been only the one direct damage against the boss, but everything after that would have been hitting on the boss. Okay, okay, I see, I see. I'll do, I'll do that next time with it if I survive that long. I see. Just use it to slam the boss, right? Okay, okay. I was trying to like maximize damage on the card, but yeah. Oh no, you know what I want to do? Let's just activate that guy actually. Undo last move. Let's go like this. I don't know. I don't know, let's just mess around with it. It's required. Oh, we get another objective. Beautiful. Great. More objectives. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. This guy. Oh yeah, exploding dice. Oh, there we Victory. go. <laughs> yeah, that's super powerful, and you just keep doing it on the same guy when you're on your charge side, right? Because it does, like, direct damage every single one. Yeah, that's pretty beefy. I like that. Oh, there's our achievements. We defeated Along. We won on sudden death. And we got Natalia's finisher. Beat a boss that has at least one of each defense. Ah. Oh. And a long was defeated on sudden death. That's cool. That's cool. All right, what's next?
Oh, that's cool. So it shows that's what that is. It's the not how many times you won with them. It's just like how many objectives you've or achievements you've unlocked with that fighter. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. Well, now what? What do you guys want to do? What do you want to do? Who should we play now? Kind of want to try out this Brandon because you guys were talking about him in the last stream. How he's cool with all his combos and stuff. But I don't. I've never played with him. Gabriel, I'm not sure. Gabriel's jujitsu prowess gives him the edge in up close and personal fights. He specializes in gaining defense tokens and then spending them to perform devastating strike cards. When the time is right, when charged, Gabriel can unleash a handful of strike cards while he rolls around the stage to engage several enemies. Let's see here. So Gabriel's got De La Riva Guard. Oh, he's 15 health. That's, yeah, okay. Eight to charge? What the heck is that? That's crazy. It was a base attack. Two dice in each defense token the target used to block this attack. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. After this attack, you may discard one defense token to play one strike card. Oh, let's go back. Hold on. I want to see the other side. Barambolo? It's three dice for the attack, targeting each enemy engaged with you. After this attack, you may move up to three spaces, playing up to two strike cards at any time during this movement. Then flip the card. So, oh, here's the strike cards. There's oh, are they all? We've got attack, strike, attack, strike, attack, strike. Okay, so it's, it's three attack cards, three of each. So nine cards in his deck are strike cards. Hammer fist hold. Gain one defense token from any an enemy engaged with you and attack. Then you may discard one power to either choose one strike card from your discard pile to add to your hand or play one strike card. Okay. Knife hand strike. Attack with a die, gaining plus one die if the target of this attack has fewer defense tokens than you. <laughs> uh, then, if the target of this attack is not defeated and has no defense tokens, return this card to your hand instead of discarding it. Leaping Thou? Pai Zhao? Move up to two spaces and attack with two dice. Then you may discard one card to return this card to your hand instead of discarding it. We have Ground Fighter. Start of your turn, you may gain one defense token from an enemy engaged with you. <laughs> you like Gabriel, yeah? Or you love Gabriel? I'm going to try them. I've never played George. I've never even read its cards before until now. <laughs> I just want to try some different things. Uh, so yeah, we'll try this guy. So tactic. At the start of your turn, you may gain one defense token from an enemy engaged with you. Let's just... like I, I don't know. Oh, Gracie Master. Ah, that's awesome. All right. So uh, let's go with just selecting him. Uh, Mark says, uh, would like to get the physical version, but it's hard to get here in Germany. Yeah, it was hard to get here in Canada too. Um, is the app a good option? I mean, the app only cost me, I think like 13 or 14 Canadian dollars. I don't know what that would be for you, Mark, but, uh, I mean, it's got all the stuff that's in the base set. So if you just want to play and try the game and, and you're okay just playing by yourself and playing with multiple fighters or solo fighters, uh, it works. It's it's all here. I don't know. It's it's fine. It just has no online play though or, or like multiplayer play unless you're all hovered around the same like tablet or, or phone or whatever. And it's not available on Steam. Only on iOS and only on Android right now. I don't know if it's ever coming to Steam. I have no idea. Racy Master is not unique, so you can have three copies of it down. Not like most tactics, right?
But yeah, Mark, I learned I actually learned how to play in the digital app for this game first, going through the tutorial. And then I was able to understand the game pretty well. And then I just played a few games on the digital version. Then I read the rule book. And then I played the physical game. And I was it was like pretty easy. Um, but there were some things that the app kind of handled for me that I kind of just got used to and forgot. But uh, is there's a nice tutorial in this too to learn the game. Uh, And George is trying to get people to play Spirit Island Digital because the more they sell, the quicker we get Branch and Claw. Yeah, but with that company, George, those developers, they're like slow adding stuff to apps in general. I don't know. Like all, all the apps, like Aeon Zen's been out for a while and, and I don't even know if they've added anything to that yet. I know they're like working on like the first, the first like small expansion for it. But they don't seem like a very quick development house, that's for sure. So you might you might be waiting a long time for that. But I, I've seen them like that on their streams. They always try to tell you like, yeah, if we'll sell more, we'll get more expansions. But I don't think that's up to how many they sell. I think it's up to the publisher like Asmodee or Greater Than Games to actually pay them to make additional content. I don't think it's up to like if they sell enough, but it's probably probably mathed in there. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they make okay stuff, but like I played the Aeon Zenda app and it's like, I don't know, Handelabra. Uh, they're no Direwolf Digital, that's for sure. I don't know who does this one, but uh, find out. Look at all those playtesters. Yeah, that's what I like to see. Look at all those playtesters. Uh... I guess Tim Chase is like one guy developed this. Yeah, this one guy, Tim Chase, made this. Oh, George is in here. Oh, I don't want to play this anymore. I want to play. Oh, man, George's name's in here. I don't want to play this guy. Ah. <laughs> okay, the fact that this has been put together by one dude, basically. And, and he had to deal with George the whole time, playtesting. Man, credit goes to Tim Chase. He put together a nice little app for a one-man show. I am quite impressed. So me bitching and complaining that there's no online mode, no proper multiplayer, uh, and it's also missing um, being able to save your stuff to like a Google account or like Steam account, those kind of things. So, so it's not saved locally on the device, so your achievements would would pass across all your Android devices or all your iOS devices. Those are my small minor complaints, but knowing this was just put together by one dude. Awesome. Oh, Tim's here. <laughs> hey, Tim, great job. <laughs> Tim, I didn't even put it together. You met, you were in there earlier. I didn't even put it together. You didn't say anything. <laughs> Hello, Tim, welcome. <laughs> You're taking notes. Okay, here's, yes, we need online. And I know there's functionality in other Android apps where if I play on my phone, then I go to my tablet, then I go to my emulator on my PC, it will save my progress and save my achievements. I noticed right away when I, I unlocked achievements on my phone and then I booted up on my tablet on Google, still on Google, I downloaded the app and none of my achievements were there. I know that exists. I know that's a thing that's been in, in like the Google SDK or whatever for a while. Um, that is possible. I just, I think you just have to hook it up to Google Play Games or something to do that. But yeah, that's the only thing I noticed that's, that was like, that's a nice little, it's a nice to have. It's not needed. Not everyone plays on multiple devices, but I do. So it was just, I noticed it right away. And a lot, a lot of games do that. Uh, and online, I want to be able to bug my friends to buy this game, but I, I don't right now because I can't play with them. So I just bug them to come over to my house and play. So that's, a, that's another feedback for you. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> oh. Open up here. Incognito mode. Yes. Awesome. All right. Yeah, the heavenly dragon card thing. Good, good call, George. Good call. Yeah, that was confusing. I didn't know what a heavenly dragon card was. All right. We're doing Gabriel. Or we're choosing Gabriel, I should say. Continue. Okay. Um, 
Should have been in the place of special. Oh, okay. Okay, like in, in the bottom of the card, I get it. I haven't looked at the physical cards to know if they say that on them. Uh, as I've not played with the Golden Dragons yet. My wife's actually painting the physical Golden Dragons right now. And I'll be playing with them on stream tomorrow. Unless she doesn't get them painted in time. And Mel, if you're in the chat, you should be painting right now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, and stage setups. Stage setups. Doc, Doc mentioned the other one. I, I totally forgot. I mentioned this earlier too. Even if the stage is selected random or not, it should show the stage setup side of the, the, the uh, stage card. Uh, not just the back rule side. You should see the front first and then flip to the back to go through the instructions. Thanks, Mel. I love you. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't know. Who should we try here? George, you have a recommendation? We're playing Gabriel. Uh, and we want to highlight Gabriel here. What's Which enemy deck and which stage would highlight Gabriel? Not necessarily make it easy for him. Or super hard, but just something that like, you know, we'll get to showcase some of his stuff. I don't know all the content in the game. I have not played with the cartel. I'll try them. I, I'll play whoever. I, I don't care. I gotta experience it sometime. So the cartel, Juan keeps his distance and uses his minions to shield himself from damage. I don't like this Juan guy already. Fighters must approach Juan with caution, timing their attacks appropriately. Preferably when he's reloading his sign- he's got a gun? Whoa, whoa. Brought a gun to a knife fight. Uh, in order to survive Juan's brutal unload effects, fighters need to constantly take cover by keeping defense tokens stocked. <laughs> okay, we'll try the cartel. Look at this guy. <laughs> Look at this guy. Smoking, got his gun there, ready to go. Got an 1812 Fintlock Carbine. He is cheaty like that. Know the boss from Double Dragon? I didn't, I, George, it's been a long time since I played Double Dragon, but yeah, I don't, I don't remember. There's a boss from the Twin Tiger expansion that brings a machine gun to the night fight. <laughs> uh, I love the theme in this game though. All right, so let's, let's just fight. Let's just go. Let's just see how these guys work. Let's just see. All right, what stage? What stage, George? What stage do you want? Because I know George knows the game, so that's, that's why I'm asking George here to which, which one to pick. Steel Memories? Okay, sure. Yeah, whatever. Steel Memories. The origins of the kingdom trace back to a steel room where they once held their official tournaments. However, now these rooms are used as training facilities to test fresh recruits. These fighting pits are essential death sentences to the worst of the kingdom's foes. AoE charge side will do no good. We'll do good there. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So let's see here. Yeah, even when looking at this card, I, can I, I can't flip it, right? To look at the setup side. I know the app handles it for you though, so it's not like a huge worry. Because the rules are like most important on the back, right? Recruit spaces are treated as block spaces for all figures except fresh recruits. Each time a fresh recruit is defeated, it is returned to the fresh recruit supply, unless a card effect specifically removes it from the game. When a fighter must recruit, they resolve the recruit effect below. So the recruit effect, place one fresh recruit from the supply in the empty recruit space nearest you. And then there's an activate here, the boss, and each fresh recruit advance two spaces towards the nearest fighter. Each fresh recruit attacks, gaining plus one attack value if within three spaces of the boss. Then each fighter must recruit. So the objectives are characters. They enter, play active, treated like a fresh recruit. After this enemy is defeated, remove three fresh recruits in the fresh recruits supply from the game. Then shuffle this card and the stage deck discard pile back in the stage deck. Crowbar. 
Hold on, what's going on here? So we have a character, and then oh, we have different objectives. This is neat. Uh, uh, yeah, with multiple objectives that are different. I like that. During their turn, a fighter in this objective space may discard one of their defense tokens to pick it up. And you can exhaust this to attack with a single die, targeting up to two targets engaged with you and dealing general damage. Huh. Yeah, I've never played this one either. This is cool. Fresh recruits. <laughs> Reference. Oh, 30, 30 tokens, I guess. This fresh recruit supply. Each fresh recruit is treated as an enemy figure with a health value of 1 and an attack value of 1. Fresh recruits cannot gain defense tokens and are defeated if they would be exhausted. Each time a fighter is instructed to remove a fresh recruit from the supply and none remain, instead that fighter may deal the boss to direct damage. Ooh. Yeah, Tim, it's just coming from the like board gamer side of it to the digital. I always like prioritize the board game experience. But the, coming the other way, yeah, they don't need to see this, the setup. But maybe if you could just like flip it to look at it. Like, I think you would still default. So when we go in here, here's how I would recommend it. I would say you go in, fight. show me the rules like this. This is fine. But just have like the little flip option up in the top. You know, the little uh, circle flip that, that you can do with the, the hero cards as you're, as you're viewing them in the deck viewer. And just so you can flip it, but you don't have to flip it by default. But just so if, if players like me want to know, we're curious, we want to understand what's going on, just give the option to flip. But I still wouldn't show it by default because the app handles it, right? But for those who are curious, and even when browsing the deck, you should be able to know what is, you know, how it's set up and what's coming up, right? Uh, okay, so recruit. Recruit spaces are treated as block spaces for all figures except fresh recruits. The other thing, the other reason why that too, uh, is players will play these digital versions of games to see if they're interested in the physical or use it to learn. And then they want to go play the physical game. But if the app's like kind of hiding, I understand hiding stuff functionality wise, but they still should be able to kind of finger through all the components and stuff if they want, which you do have that. It's nice they can look through all the cards of the decks before picking them and stuff. Um, it just goes with that kind of mentality of like trying to trying to experience it all before making the purchase on the physical maybe they know or learning on this before they play the physical so it, it's kind of showing you everything you need but it's like there's a fine balance there right you're the developer not me so don't don't take my word as gospel <laughs> uh, all right so root spaces uh, we already read all this yep so recruit spaces are up in the top middle, top or right, bottom middle, left middle here. Okay, boss spots in the middle. And they enter in these stairwells, just like the gone ballistic, kind of in the corners. Rates are kind of spread out. Okay, okay. So let's go. The objectives are all just in play. Okay, cool. So here's Juan. Juan has 18 health, attacks with 3 dice, he's a boss. When Juan unloads, resolve the unload effect on 1812 Flintlock Carbine. When he activates, if engaged, he attacks, retreats 2 spaces, gains a random defense token. But if he's not engaged, Juan gains 2 random defense tokens and moves up to 3 spaces to be within 4 spaces of the nearest fighter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, chats, chats are asking about the PC version. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I think something's wrong with my app. It's smoking. Uh, it's actually on fire here in the center, and smoke is coming from it. Nice touch, nice touch. <laughs> that's hilarious. Okay, <laughs> out of all the things you can animate, that's funny. All right, so let's see here. <laughs> what kind of message are you trying to send here? <laughs> now, if I can punch that out of his mouth, that would be awesome. All right. So this is our fighter. Where are we starting? Where are we starting? I like to always start near crates and maybe some crowbars. 
I want to pick up a crowbar. I don't know what this Gabriel guy really does. Oh, right here, I guess. Select any cards to discard from your starting hand. So we're going to mulligan. We got back mount setup. All about defense. Okay. So is there a certain card we should be like looking for i always just go for the tactics try to get as many different tactics in in my hand at the start it's gracie master each time you deal damage you may convert one damage to any type of general damage you may convert one damage of any type exhaust gain one defense token of your choice two defense tokens of your choice if you're engaged or heal one damage yeah that seems good okay okay Um, I'm going to discard this one. I'm going to discard this one. I like this attack, though. Wrist lock. What was that? Oh, yeah, we got two other tactics. Sweet. Wrist lock. Okay, so the Gracie Master is the one you're saying it's not unique. I see there's no star there, so we can have as many of these in play as we want. And then we have Wrist Lock, which is an exhaust. I love exhaust effects. So exhaust a minion engaged with you that has no defense tokens and heal one. Action, play one strike card or draw one card. Okay, and then a feint. Deal two direct damage to an enemy engaged with you if this deals an enemy. If this defeats an enemy, sorry. Gain each defense token remaining on that enemy's card. Wow. That's cool. Ground Fighter. At the start of your turn, you may gain one defense token from an enemy engaged with you. I see. So we want to be nearby enemies is what I'm getting from this guy. Exhaust. If you're engaged, return one strike card from your discard pile back to your hand. And then faint. Gain four random defense tokens. I don't even know what to start with here. But anyways, that's cool. All right, let's start our turn. Getaway. Event. Remove Juan from the map and place him in the empty space nearest the entry space that is furthest from any fighter, then Juan unloads. I don't know, we'll put him up there. Gracie Master is a good start. Okay. I'm down. Yeah, it's the only one that doesn't need to be need me to be engaged with any money. Yeah. Not engaged. Oh. Huh. Okay. Um, oh. oh, yeah, because you can exhaust at any time. Yeah, we could have waited till after. Yeah, let's do that. Undo last move. <laughs> okay, so let's just move three and pick this thing up, right? Yeah, let's go for it. All right, move three. Done. Action. Oh, I already picked it up. 
I pick it up? No, I didn't, right? I have to discard a defense, still going to pick it up. So I need to use... I need to use that ability now. Get a defense token. Ha! So then, I can pick it up. Now, how do I drop them? Let's see if we can find that out. Anything about dropping these things? I think so, right? You don't drop them. Excellent. So I don't have to worry about getting punched and dropping them? Yeah. Okay, okay. I like this stage. I already like this stage. I think. Let's see here. Uh, so that wasn't that my action though. Guess not. Pick that up is not an action. It's just a passive ability. So I could have actually used this uh, defend action instead, but I will hey. just defend. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, let's just uh, activate. There's a fresh recruit. Fresh recruit. Okay. Hammer fist hold. Gain one defense token from an enemy engaged with you and attack. Then you may discard one power to either choose a straight card from your discard pile and add to your hand or play a straight card. Okay, let's just activate the boss man. Let's do it this way. moved all right what's going on with this thing when this card enters play place two power on it this card cannot leave play and cannot have more than two power on it activate if this card has no power on it place two power on it otherwise juan unloads an unload is a fighter within four spaces of juan that is not engaged with him discards one power from this card juan deals that fighter for general damage yeah that's a little rough It'll be hard to keep tokens on if he keeps firing at me. Stupid recruits. Card. Stage card. All right. Oh, wow. I like the art on this one. <laughs> Demoralizing finisher event. Any fighter may place this card in their fighter play area. Hey, okay. do I want you? But then you can faint. After defeating a fresh recruit, you may spend any excess damage beyond that fighter's health value to remove one figure in the fresh recruit supply from the game for each point of damage spent. Okay. For a turn. Now, I just drew on the enemy. This is my threat. So I should have probably exhausted that crowbar. Yeah, can I go back? Too late. So I think if I do this, right, it will ready up. Stage turn. Draw card. Our turn. Here we get Lucille. Oops. Enemies adjacent to Lucille are immune to direct damage. Activate. Attack each fighter. Engage with this enemy and move three spaces towards the nearest engaged enemy. Then each other enemy within four spaces enemy gains one random defense token. Only four health, but she comes in with two grapple and two punch defense. 
What is that? Okay. We're doing this. Oh, which attack? Yeah, that's ex George exactly what I was thinking of. I want to play a tactic card. I'm just trying to figure out. I could exhaust her, right? Exhaust a minion cage with you that has no defense. Oh, okay. No, she needs. I need to get rid of her defense tokens. But this, I think, ground fighter probably, right? I don't have any strike cards in my discard pile, though. Yeah, these are not too great right now, <laughs> but we'll roll with it. For one damage to general damage. Now this I'm a confused. After this attack, you may Oh, this is from another card, right? Yeah, each time you damage, you may convert one damage to any type to general. And I'm hitting with two grapple. And she has two grapple. It doesn't really matter, right, in this case? I guess it would because I can choose general, right? And choose to remove different tokens and then steal different tokens, right? Like it, it helps me target which tokens I want to take off the enemy, I think. That's what I probably should have thought, thought of. Oh, she likes grapple. I don't know. Oh, exploding dice. Nice. Oh. Let's see what she has. So she has one punch left. So converting it to general just gets rid of the punch. But that might work good for this. Where is it? This one next turn, right? No. No, it was the other card in my hand, wasn't it? Yeah, I should have done risk lock and then like set it up so I could exhaust, but I, I want to take her out first anyway, but I see, I see. Okay, uh, let's go back. So, we're going to get to general. I don't think really matters. Let's just skip it. Down to two left. This is just going to get rid of the token anyway. Maybe I should have left that in my discard pile. <laughs> I don't know, attacking this. I might wait for the attack. Let's just go ahead. Uh, 
Uh, oh, she's gonna. She hits hard. Okay. I don't know if it's good to block at all, but I'm gonna do it. Back alley, Bayana. Remove, remove an enemy adjacent to you from the map. Move up to three spaces, then place the removed enemy in an empty space adjacent to you. Deal the enemy three general damage, gaining each defense token they use to block that damage. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Activate the boss. Who else is it trying to put this in front of? I'm the only option here, I think, right? Or can I choose nobody? No, I don't know. Anyways, not sure why it was asking me. Uh, there was no other fighter, right? I think that might be a bug. Maybe any fighter may place this card in their fighter play area. Yeah, maybe I could have said no to that. That's fine. That is fine. All right. Ignacio, activate, deal the farthest fighter within five spaces of this enemy, one general damage for each defense token this enemy has. Advance three spaces towards the nearest fighter, attack, then retreat two spaces. Then, if this enemy has no defense tokens, it gains three random defense tokens. Yeah, Mel, you gotta make notes of like what colors you use on, on each mini you paint. So then we can share that when people are asking me during streams and stuff. <laughs> or in the painting streams when you show them off. That's something probably we should do. Doug, Doug makes some good, good questions there. Good questions. Uh, but really when you paint minis, just use what you have, right? Just make it look how you want. You can make anything look any color you want, right? It doesn't matter. But for this game you want, if you're painting the bases, make sure they you do one of each color of the little snap-on bottoms or the that match the cards, right? George is saying, so move up to the boss, use back Ellie Bayana to steal his defense and get him back next to Lucille, and then hit both with crowbar. Ooh. Okay. Try that. I want to. Still be engaged, right? So I can do the other ones after. Move. Yeah, it's enemy, not just minion for this back alley card. I like it. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Here. Deal that enemy three gen general general damage, gaining defense token. Throw him here. Let's see what's in my hand. Have a kick and a grapple, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Ah, uh, that's a good, good, good point, George. Uh, for retreating, he wouldn't retreat up the wall, right? He has to go like. 
directly straight back, like perpendicular to the line that he on edge of my hex that he's against, right? So he would try to move like northeast, but he can't because the wall's there, right? So he would retreat nowhere. Is that how that works? Yeah, yeah, okay, so it's directly straight back. So he won't go up the wall. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. I didn't realize that before. I should pay attention, though, when these guys do retreat effects to see that. But I was trying to understand that from the rule book, and it does have an example where it's going, like, straight, but it doesn't show an example of, like, that they can't go another way. Ah, uh, okay, okay. That's cool. All right. We're at halfway up to getting charged. I want to get charged. Uh, okay, so let's do... Where is this? Exhaust. Okay. Uh, exhaust. Oh, nice crowbar roll. Getting some defense, punching these guys, that's great. Steals one away. So I could play a strike card. One, let's see. Steel has no defense tokens. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. That's where I was going with it. I was just trying to make sure, I'm like trying to read all the cards to make sure I understand the combo. So I, I, the plan is attack here. Gain each defense token used to block the attack. So I check her. She has no defense tokens. But the boss man, he, oh, he has none either. Oh, come on, guys. I need them to have defense tokens. <laughs> no, I'm okay. I'm okay. I still want to hit him. It goes right through, right? Action. So let's punch this guy for two. Convert one to general. It does not matter in this case, right? Choose up to one defense token to remove. Yeah, we'll take away a grapple. We get to play a strike card. So we could play this one. This one's a move and attack for two dice, or we can gain one defense token from an enemy engaged with you and attack. Then you may discard one power to either choose one strike card from your discard pile and add to your hand, or to play one strike card. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this one, I think? I don't know. Yeah. All right, Brass Knuckles, sweet. But only to a punch attack. Uh... Hammer fist hold, so I can discard power, either choose one strike card from your discard pile and add it to hand. Yes. I want to do the first one. Oh, there are none in my discard pile right now? Oh, because this is being resolved. Yeah, it's not in my discard pile yet. Sure, whatever, whatever, whatever. Just move. I don't know. Nowhere. Not discarding. Good. Okay. Add it back to hand. Let's get back this one. Okay. Look at the amount of defense tokens. This is crazy. I love it. Wrist lock, activate Juan, he's gonna attack. Yeah, let's just do it.
Yep. Ah! Charged, finally. We did it. All right. Edge of defeat event. Each fighter engaged with at least one fresh recruit may choose to suffer one direct damage for each fresh recruit engaged with them. Each fighter that suffers at least two damage this way may immediately perform one action. No, ne they never work out for me. Never. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I should press the maximum button. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I, wish, I wish the physical board game had the maximum button, but I, I'm used to picking tokens one by one. <laughs> uh, okay, another Ignacio. Oh, he's in the corner with me. All right, so we're engaged. We are engaged quite a bit here. What's the best way? I feel like we should just crowbar. I want to go get more crowbars. Do I need to do that though? I feel like I'm in like a good spot here in this corner. How much does the boss have left? 15? Okay, can we just pound him a bit? Whoops, 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 whoops. What we got in hand? Okay. What's this, what's this charge stuff? Let's see. We can attack with three dice targeting each enemy engaged with you. Ooh. And play strike cards from hand, but we only have one, I think. Yeah. I don't have a wrist lock in play yet. Oh, this we can exhaust this Ignacio. He has no defense tokens. Okay. Let's go like this. Play this card. Okay. Go and just do this ability, I guess. Choose three moves remaining, two cards to play remaining. I know it's probably a bad idea uh, to move away, but I, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to play around. I want to go get another crowbar. I want to get some more uh, loot. Tim says, FYI, you can tap your health or defense stats at the top of your area to show health. Slash defense for all tokens on the board. That is an awesome tip. I did not know that. So that's up up here. So if I go like this, you're saying? Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Oh, there's energy. Okay. Oh, that's neat. I did not know this. Oh, there's a bug, I think. No, I see. Oh, I see. Goes a 10. I got it. I got it. I click too fast. <laughs> I see. Okay, that's cool. No, that's cool, Tim. Thank you for the tip. And everyone watching, you're welcome. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Is that in here somewhere? Would I have known that in the tutorial that I played like weeks ago that I forget already? Probably. That's a cool tip. Yeah, because I keep like flipping back, right? I keep like, let's check this guy and let's check that guy. Okay. But yeah, it's all, all right there. If I just tap that, that's cool. Good to know, good to know. Okay. Let's... Play a strike. So what's a strike in my hand still? It does move two spaces and attack. Then you may discard one card to return this card to your hand instead of discarding it. Sure. Because that's good because then it'll, it'll give me two strikes in hand, right? Okay, let's, let's have some fun. Okay, so we're going to go back here. We'll move. Actually, we can play a strike right now, right? Play. Uh, we'll not move. We'll hit the boss man. Okay, we'll discard this. And... We'll play a strike. Move. Floating die. Oh, nice. Look at it. It's going. Uh, we'll skip this. Okay. 
Then we're going to move. Move this way. And go here. Then. Crowbar still? Yeah. Yeah. Toss. Awesome. Your knuckleheads. Ah! <laughs> yeah, smash with a crowbar. That feels good. All right. Uh, next, move three. I'm gonna go here. Rob's always gotta get the loots. Think bombs. Okay. Oh, I forgot to exhaust this stuff before, while I was still engaged. Uh, that's okay. And I forgot to do this exhaust and mini engage with you that has no defense tokens before I left. Uh, that's okay. I won't rewind. That's fine. Let's just get one defense for now. Or can I? Heal one. If I heal. What's my health? Could be 15. Yeah, let's just heal. It's fine. Okay. Um, oh, you still get to heal a damage off this. I should have just done that as my heal. That's fine. That's okay. I, I don't know what I'm doing here. All right. Let's just end. Okay. Draw a card. Round fighter. Need some strike cards in hand. Oh, let's do maximum. Do it. Nope, that didn't. I messed up. Okay. Lost. Huh. Lost this guy. I don't. Oh, and there's no minion. That's just a heal, right? Whoops. Third turn. Oh, there's a minion. All right. Tyrone, five health, three attack dice. Comes in with each defense token. Activate, advance three spaces towards the nearest fighter and attack. If this enemy did not attack, the nearest fighter must discard one power, one defense token, or one card. Ooh, just, just through intimidation. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow, wow. Okay. Want that crowbar. Want that crowbar? All right, let's get that back. What do we want to do here? Huh. Okay. Lucas, thank you for subscribing. Welcome, welcome. All right. Uh... Okay, let's move to here. Uh, let's pick this up. Okay. Let's... Okay. This card. Go 
here. Two kick. What's this guy have for tokens? One of each. So yeah, I think I want to do the general damage in this case. So what's happening here? This is me playing this card. You may discard one card or turn this card to your hand instead of discarding it. So that's okay. We'll get rid of this one. And do this. So we put this guy to sleep for a bit and then oh I should have attacked with this first uh, I forgot about the whole gaining I don't know why I stripped all of his tokens off first Or is there another action I probably should do? Just draw a card. Yeah. And these guys are going to move. They move. That card. That card's with me, right? The, the one that they move. Uh, right here. Advance two spaces, so I should have went here if I wanted this guy to interact with me. That's okay. Let's just exhaust this. Okay. So much defense. Yeah, oh, I see. It won't let you do maximum because it's general. So I still have to choose. Which is fine. Absolutely fine. Third. Let's try to get one of these to fire off. After defeating a fresh recruit, you may spend excess damage. Okay. So much shiny things. <laughs> All right, let's just go punch the boss. Let's could remove this guy from the map, move up to three spaces, place him in an empty space adjacent to you, deal that enemy three general. Gaining each defense token used to block that damage, but he has no defense tokens left because we stripped them. But boss man got a bunch. Guys, so many enemies. Okay, let's eat up some minions. Move here. Yes. Done. Want to then play this card. Grab this guy. 
I want to move. Here? No, no. I want to move to here. Okay. I want to drop the boss. Here. I'm going to remove this, this. Okay. Loaded with the tokens. All right. Now, this we crowbar. We'll attack. Okay, all well, ripping defense tokens off, really. Um, hey! and let's do this. Defense token. We want play strike. This I'm gonna move just to here. Get the loot. Oh, there we go. Direct damage. For one damage. We discard this. We return that back to hand. That's fine. This. Lost. I didn't heal, right? Just some heal. All right, exhaust here. If you're engaged, return one strike card. Yep. Well, do we try to get the loot achievement? I feel like we should. I feel like we should. Has only got three health left. All right, so we we should have beat the minions up. Should have beat them. We're okay. We're okay. Uh. Oh, one general. This one. Yeah. Charged. All right, finally. Our defense tokens, three general. Sure. Damn, I'm taking like no hits. I love it. Which resource will Gabriel discard? I have power to throw away right now? I think so, right? I have five spare? Yeah. Uh, but then I, I could flip to charge really quick. I want to toss a card though. Defense, I guess. Do I have a thousand of those? Yep. Here it is.
Two phones. Nice. I like looking at them all. This is awesome. Okay. Surrounded. Yeah, literally. Uh, the fighter with the most fresh recruits within two spaces of them and no copy of Surrounded in their threat area plays this card in their threat area. Each time you defeat a fresh recruit, place one power on this card. Then if there's five power on this card, discard it. Activate. Discard one defense token for each fresh recruit within two spaces of you. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's a bad card to have out there. All right. On alert. When a fighter moves into a space adjacent to Juan, he retreats three spaces from that fighter. Then, uh, if he retreated, Juan then gains two random defense tokens, unloads, and discards this card. Okay. All right, so we need the three more loot before we win. I'm trying to get that achievement. Let's do it. Okay, so how much does this guy have? Six health left. So let's go. We do this. I mean, I could just go grab loot, but I want to kind of do it from beating minions up. Let's do it like this. Go here. Oh, doesn't like that way. Go here. Okay. Go crowbar. My God. Don't even hit them. Crowbars aren't as cool as I thought. Let's just try to take these guys out. Okay. Think of this. Oh, I should have. Still move, right? Yeah, okay. Move here. And we'll go with this ability. There. Oh, there's another loot. Okay. Play a strike card. I have actually for strike cards in hand. Be here. It only has one hit left. Yeah, let's just do that. Okay, let's go back where we're at. Play a strike. Play a card. Okay, got another loot. Oof. Yeah, look at these exploding dice. I love it. All right. Uh, what's this guy have on him for? He has none. Six health. Okay. Looking for defense tokens. We don't. I don't wanna. That's fine. Play it again on this guy. Don't move. Oh, keep it rolling. Run away. Run away, so run away. I mean, he will come after me. Move. Ha! 
heals us. Oh, I forgot I still haven't played a card. That was all for my ability. Oh, I shouldn't have left. That was fine. I could play a card. Yeah. Austin more. Uh, and all that loot. One more loot. One more loot. I think it's three or six for the achievement, right? Uh, okay, let's go. So many cards, like turns are taking forever. That's okay though. A lot to do with this fighter. I'm not doing it efficiently, I know. Um, add one here. Come to me. Our defense still gonna block. Cut. Charged again. Nice. Start turn, Lucille. All right. One more. Probably best to punch this guy. Rollbar. Rollbar this guy. And, and there's a chance the crowbar two, two, three. Okay, let's try this. Go here, play card, move to here, get that loot, give me the loot, oh, okay, skip, okay, then I'm going to move here, oh, I forgot he runs away, that's okay, <laughs> okay, okay, Oh man, running low on tokens. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. All right, let's do cool. Much was left on these guys. Three and a one. Yeah, we don't want to waste that. We don't want to spend any loot. No, 
not I don't that already. We're already full damage anyway, it doesn't matter. We could spend one loot, but we won't. All right, so let's activate. Plus three. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Excellent draw. All right. Each fighter engaged with at least one fresh recruit. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Again. Fine. These fresh recruits really seem to matter too much. But at least, I don't know, maybe I'm just taking out enough or. Okay, let's start our. Okay. Yeah, this guy still has a token, so I can't, can't risk lock him. Bar time. Bar. It's so many cards. This is silly. Uh! Yeah, more loot. Why not? <laughs> uh, what? Mm, no. No loot. We're not playing any loot. Okay. Do we have enough to just finish this guy with our other attack? Three. Maybe we could do this, right? No punch. Oh, yeah, he's good. All right, let's do this. Nope, can't do it. Ah, we win. All right. No, it wasn't that exciting. There was like too many cards, like getting overwhelmed. Like we had way too much stuff in our hands, and those faint cards. I don't know. I just never, never seemed to use them because I always hit the the little recruits with just like one damage. So there was never the extra damage to like fill it over to empty that pool. But that is fine with me. All right, let's see what we get. Gabriel defeated Juan. Yeah. Gabriel one steel memories. Another achievement. Yes, Gabriel is a hoarder. <laughs> Victory with six loot cards in your loot area. <laughs> I got to get that with every fighter now. <laughs> Juan defeated on Steel Memories. Cool. All right, let's check. Let's check here. Achievements. I need more gold. I need more gold. This is like a completionist nightmare right here. And so much to do. So much to do. And it scrolls this way too. Oh my god. Oh my god. So much in this app to play. And if you just like playing this game, and I like the way it's portable, like I said, my first experience with Street Masters was downloading this app, learn the game at a family function. I was bored, and I was like, man, I want to learn while everyone's busy kind of thing. I had some time, uh, and just started like playing around with the tutorial, and like, yeah, just playing Street, Street Masters on the go is really cool. Just whip up a game real fast. Like, real fast, you get right into a game. Click click it through, especially when you know what you're doing. 
Uh, and you don't get into the analysis paralysis there. Analysis paralysis as much, but cool, it saves your game. You're good to continue it later, uh, which is neat. But so much to try to unlock and achieve. I like that. I like the stuff's in there. And Tim, if you're there, is there any plans for the expansion content in here? People are asking me about that in the last stream, actually. And they're kind of bummed the way there's only base, base set stuff. But I, I totally am okay with it because it makes sense. This is going to be the entry point to Street Master for some people. You don't want to overwhelm them. But I guess they could always just buy the DLC and like enable things in the app as they want. But if you're th still there, Tim, I'm just curious. Uh, if there's any plans or if expansion content is coming at all or if it depends on sales or anything like that just just out of curiosity if you can't say that's cool too <laughs> i understand <laughs> all right sweet yeah anyone have any questions or anything uh about street masters i think i'm going to wrap up the stream here uh, but that was a look at street masters digital uh oh i see the chat wasn't like refreshing properly i just had to refresh it i'm sorry guys uh the chat hasn't been working for like the last like five minutes i just had to refresh it oh indeed says tim okay okay see you george thank you for your help george uh so much i appreciate it rob's toying with his food that's exactly what i was doing yes i was toying with my food there just trying to get an achievement uh which is part of the fun right if you're really doing well you can get those achievements unlocked uh loot hoarder yeah six loot Oh, see, you guys were answering me, and I didn't see the chat. I'm so sorry. It wasn't refreshing. YouTube's been doing that for, like, the last week or so. Sometimes the chat window on my end will just, will just like, lock up, but I don't realize. Uh, I pity if we have Mr. Tyrone. Yeah, Mr. T. Uh, Jordan's saying, so, Rob, for someone not going to get the board game due to space and Corona killing game groups right now, would you recommend this app for play for someone who likes to play board game apps? Yeah, it's a very well-done app. It gives me the exact same feel. And not all apps do this correctly. Like some apps that are adaptations of board games, they don't do it well enough. They hide too much stuff. They try to get fancy with the graphics, you know, put symbols all over everything. Um, like one one game that kind of was like, I like playing it was fun, but I wish they really didn't do the whole, um, the UI I didn't really like on it was uh, Lord of the Rings, the adventure card game. But I know a new digital studio is taking over that and they're going to like kind of make it look more, Kind of look more like a game with actual proper card images and stuff instead of just like circles like Hearthstone. Like everyone shares a Hearthstone their apps and I'm not a fan of that. Uh, I like it to be more true to the board game that it's coming from. Uh, but this is a very good adaptation of that. I like how I can see all the text on the cards. All the components are there. I'm moving guys around on the, on the map. It's, it's very functional. Works decent on a phone. Uh, even a smaller screen. It still plays nice. It's kind of got to hold it up. But they, they have the symbols. If you get used to the symbols... You don't have to worry about the text being too small uh, if you just get used to what all the symbols do. Um, but yeah, it's a very well done app. Price seems reasonable, uh, at least for me. I think it was a decent priced app. Um, but yeah, it's very well done for what it is. Like I said, I just wish it, it had online mode. But if you don't care about playing people online and you just want to boot it up, uh, play with your buddy who's in the room with you, play with your, your you know significant other, whoever, uh, you could just start in arcade mode, pick a couple heroes and just take turns clicking away. Or you can just play by yourself and you can pick. I didn't show it, but you can. Like I can go in here and select four fighters. And I can grab, you know, an enemy and do like a, you know, stage. Fight. And boom. We're, we're now four fighters. Like if you want to just run four fighters, you can do it in this. Without like, you know, in the physical game, you got to manage all the hands and the decks and everything. This, the app will do that for you, right? So it's, it's much easier. I'd be more prone to play like dual handed or whatever in a digital version of the game. But as you can see here, everything's very clear. Everything's like up front. I like it. It's all there. It, it's, it's the board game in, in a digital form. It's done very well. I've had zero app crashes too, by the way, on multiple Android devices. So that's, that's good. Uh, but yeah, very, very nice, do very nice job, Tim. I like it. Yeah, the problem with the Lord of the Rings adventure card game is heavily inspired by the board game. They even work with the developers of the board game to try to make it very close. But then the developers who used to work on that, uh, who don't exist anymore, they were, um, that studio was trying to make it like very Hearthstone, trying to like, they were trying to pull gamers into the hobby through that app instead of giving something to the hardcore fans or the players that already were in the LCG space. 
playing those kind of games already. So board gamers tried it out and went, hey, this isn't the same as the game I love because they tried to dumb it down and make it too easy. And then new players would try it, but like, I don't think anyone was trying that game and then go buying the physical game based on that. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think they were trying to with that app was pull people into the hobby from people that were just playing like Hearthstone and stuff and trying to pull them into the physical board game space. But I don't think that app did a good job of that, like just with the interface and the dumbed down rules, but it did feel similar to the card game. Um, but I still prefer the physical game of Lord of the Rings, the living card game. Hopefully they kind of bring it closer together uh, with the new studio that's working on that app now. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see. Uh, but it's still fun. If you like Lord of the Rings and you don't want to carry, you know, 2,000 cards in your pocket when you're traveling, you can play uh, Lord of the Rings, a digital app, and still get a kind of feel for it on the go. You can get it on Switch, Android, all that stuff. You can play it on your PC if you don't want to build decks and get out the cards. But it is a whole different card pool to learn. That That's kind of the barrier entry that I was, like, not really impressed with. I like my games to be as full the exact content from the board games or the card games they're inspired by. Like, just make digital versions of those games that are already awesome, already have fans. Don't try to mess with the formula. That's the way I think it should be done. And if you want to do funny stuff, add it in the expansions in the digital version. Add, add different modes in the digital version to change it up. But make sure that somebody going from that game, like Gloomhaven is a good example. A lot of players aren't buying Gloomhaven digital right now because the full game is not in there. Like, you can't play the adventure. You can't get the book. You can't just replace the physical game 100%. Because it's just some random mode in there, right? So it's the mode is awesome. It's fun. But I really wish they completed the base first. And then kind of added the fun stuff on the side. The, the goofy goofy things. It's still a great app. Don't, don't get me wrong. But I just know I've been told by a lot of people. They will not spend a dime on that thing. Until they've replicated the physical Gloomhaven board game 100%. That they've been promising for a long time, right? So that's the, that's the, the way I look at it from a, a fan's point of view, right? Uh, Matthias says, yes, I expected it to be equal to the actual game, and this one is. I got disappointed with Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that's it's, I'm the same way. Like, I understood what they're going for because I followed the Lord of the Rings through the development. Like, I was in early access. They were describing what they were doing, and I, I was okay with it. Kind of like, okay, experiment, but it didn't work. It obviously failed because that, that studio got laid off. They stopped development on the app. Asmodee had to pass it on to a different studio, so... And they're totally like rejigging it. They're gonna like you know start o not start over, but they're gonna take what's there and try to try to change it and improve it. So we'll see what that looks like over time. I don't know. I hope they do a good job with it though, and and other people get back into it. But like nobody was playing that game. Nobody was playing that game. It was still good, but there's so many other great games out there. So you, you have to be great. Also, you can't just be good. You have to be great, or else everyone's attention just goes to what's great, right? Too much stuff out there. Anyways, that's gonna be it. That's my ramble. Thank you everyone for watching. You're all awesome. Get to another screen. But yes, thanks for watching. That was Street Masters Digital. I'm sure I'll play this on the channel at some time in the future, but I'm a fan of the physical games, right? So tomorrow we're back live at 1 p.m. Eastern, I believe. We're gonna be playing some Street Masters again, but we're gonna be playing the board game, the base game. Maybe we'll play around with some of the fighters we played today now that I've seen their cards and kind of experienced them. And let's see if I can keep track of it in the physical space without the app kind of helping me out and highlighting cards, what to play and stuff. So we're going to try that tomorrow. We'll try, try maybe some of the stages and bosses we saw, or stages and enemies we saw today. And we'll mix it up. We'll see. We'll see what's that. But we'll be back tomorrow afternoon with that stream. Uh, so that'd be cool. Paul, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Always appreciate the support. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, we'll be back tomorrow with more Street Masters. Tomorrow evening we're streaming again. Streaming twice tomorrow. Uh, we're continuing our Aftermath campaign tomorrow evening. Uh, and then another stream I want to highlight this week is Thursday. No, yeah, Thursday evening, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. We are starting our campaign playthrough of Lord of the Rings, Journeys in Middle-Earth, uh, Shadowed Paths. We're, we're playing the Shadowed Paths campaign. Three player, we're having Kyle join Mel and I on stream to start that off. We'll be playing that, hopefully through completion, three players uh, each week as we come up. Similar to how we're doing our Mansions of Mana streams, except for those weren't really a connected story. Uh, we're going to play this one through, which is a similar game, obviously, uh, except for each adventure is kind of connected and goes through branching paths through a campaign. Uh, so that should be fun. So we'll be starting that on Thursday. Anyways, thanks a lot, everyone, for watching, and I'll see you in the next stream. Bye-bye.